Greetings, Bowtie 5 here, and today I'm talking to you guys about the history of men's swimwear, as you can see um, by my garment here. So to start our discussion about swimwear, we need to go back to ancient times, Roman times. Male bathing was carried out as naked water sports and um, things like that. It um, was not um, nearly as big a deal back then as you would think these days um, for men to be nude in the water. <laughs> now of course, you know, in today's times we have nude beaches and skinny dipping and things, but this was um, just a regular occurrence back then. It really wasn't until around uh, the Middle Ages that um, male nudity um, really started to become like a big, you know, to-do um, when it came to uh, aquatics. And some of the earliest coverings um, was just a kind of loin cloth or terry cloth material that just kind of wrapped around the midsection and covered um, the genitals and the rear. Um, some of the earliest forms of this is evident with um, the Japanese male fundoshi. Um, please correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And um, I will have an example of what that looks like uh, later on in the video. Um, it really wasn't until the mid-19th century that um, things, um, there really started to become steadfast rules about what men wear, you know, in the water. Um, actually, uh, 1737 is the earliest evidence of this. Um, the Bath Corporation forbidding um, nude bathing for males over the age of 10, but it was really around the um, mid to late 1800s that uh, nude bathing had um, become banned, at least in the UK. Um, drawers, or um, caligons as they were referred to at the time, were a popular means of cover-up, um, and this uh, at the time was cotton, and it was not very practical because cotton holds water gets wet and it becomes heavy, so it really restricts um, your movement in the water. Um, and the uh, later half of the decade, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, century, later half of the century, um, we started getting uh, wool as a uh, more viable um, material at the time. It, it held water, just like the cotton, but um, it was a little more durable, um, and you had a little more movement to it. But again, um, these garments at the time weighed anywhere from like 8 to 10 pounds when wet. So you got to think, you know, that's heavy, that's pulling you down. You also struggle to keep it on because it's so heavy. Um, so uh, bathers were um, quite vulnerable to the um, environment. Um, it wasn't really until um, around the turn of the um, century we started getting um, rubber being used as a viable um, material to uh, replace these men's garments of the wool and the cotton. And then a few decades later we get into uh, nylon, which is a much um, more um, conscious product. Um, in the early 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, we started moving into a more modesty kind of um, mindset. So we start getting into these um, tunic style swimsuits, um, similar to what I'm wearing here. It's one piece, you have the trunks that come down pretty far on the uh, thighs, and it connects all the way up to a top piece, which covers um, over the shoulders. Um, now, in the beginning forms of this, they were kind of loose-fitting, um, almost blousy, um, a, um, a lot bigger. They were usually solids. Um, you did have different colors, or um, you had some striped options like I'm wearing here. Of course, this isn't vintage. This is a costume piece, but it gives you an idea of um, the kind of things they were wearing back then. Um, Around the 1930s, we started getting into more streamlined options. Um, there's a famous Olympic swimmer by the name of Johnny 
Wise Mueller. Some of you may have heard of him before. He worked um, with the BVD company, who was a um, major supplier of men's swimwear at the time, um, designing um, more uh, streamlined options uh, with low cut arms and even tank top styles, which was more aerodynamic for um, swimming and uh, water sports. And you, uh, the trunks um, and things around the waist were more fitted. Um, you even had like belt buckle kind of designs to give you a more cinched look at the waist. So it gave you more movement. It wasn't as um, heavy and uh, boxy as the previous um, styles. And I have some examples of that as well, which I am going to be showing off at the end of the video. Um, now as we get to the mid-half of the century, the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, we start to break away from the uh, onesie style, or the like tunic style, and just um, getting into the trunks, um, the male mid-drift and that form was um, starting to become more socially acceptable um, in terms of like beach wear or um, at the pool, so now we're ditching the um, cumbersome top and just getting into the trunks and again at this time trunks are still kind of fitted um, not kind of as loose or as baggy as you see today um, we did start getting into like um, different beachwear looks so you had like um, it was almost like a Hawaiian shirt style top but it was usually made of the same material as the trunks um, it would be solid or maybe have a floral pattern and there would be like white trim it would almost look like um, a traditional pajama top um, that was um, also popular around that time um, and that was for like um, socializing on the beach picnics and things like that um, when you weren't in the water and you kind of wanted to cover up and you wanted something to kind of go with the trunks that's kind of the look um, we're getting to there um, and to the later um, half of the 60s into the 70s um, and even into the 80s, we um, start getting the cutoff shorts moving into fashion, um, more of like a shorter short. Um, some shorts you would have like on the side, it would have like a slit where it kind of split and it had like more movement. Uh, they usually came up pretty high up on the thigh, so you're really just covering that um, genital area. Um, the uh, Speedo came about which is a much tighter covering. It kind of just um, comes in here at the height of the thigh and just really just covers that um, genital area. Um, this was had become a really popular style with um, Olympic swimming. Uh, you had swimmers like uh, Mark Spitz, um, predecessor to Michael Phelps for um, gold medal wins. And uh, that Speedo style has remained popular to this day. Um, Olympic style swimming, it's pretty much all Speedos now at this point, uh, you know, with male uh, swimming. Um, now as we <clears throat> move on into the 90s and into the, um, the later half of the 80s, the 90s, into the 2000s and um, to today, we start getting um, Probably the trunks that you know you recognize more today. It's more of a loose-fitting trunk. Um, the legs kind of bellow out at the bottom. You have the mesh inside, so it's like a dual-layer garment. Um, you even have some like cargo options that have like the pockets. And these are drawstrings, so instead of being fitted like a one size, they fit kind of loose, and then you can tie it to um, whatever waist size you prefer. Um, so that is um, just a discussion on uh, men's swimwear and how it's evolved over the years. Um, as always, like and subscribe at the bottom. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And I'm going to leave you guys with a little clip show of men's swimwear over the years. Until next time.